Postpartum hemorrhage is a leading cause of preventable pregnancy-related illness and death. About 90% of all hemorrhage-related deaths are preventable. We have effective therapy to address hemorrhage, yet denial and delay in diagnosis and action can lead to death and other poor outcomes. The leading cause of hemorrhage is uterine atony. Poor approximation of blood loss after delivery can lead to denial and delay of treatment as well as maternal morbidity and death. The most important point here is that there is no physiologic predisposition for inequities in hemorrhage-related morbidity and mortality. The disparities we see in outcomes are related to access to and timing of appropriate treatment. It is important to recognize that disparities in hemorrhage-related deaths and injuries are not a result of characteristics of the women themselves. There are several key changes you can implement to reduce harm from obstetric hemorrhage. These changes will help to prevent denial and delay of treatment and include hemorrhage carts, improved measurement of blood loss, team-based education and drills, case review, and checklists, for instance, for active management of the third stage of labor. For some changes, such as setting up a hemorrhage cart on your labor floor and quantification of blood loss, or QBL, which ensures that we accurately measure blood loss and recognize when a hemorrhage is happening early, these changes can be made immediately. Clinicians should not be waiting for deteriorating vital signs to begin treatment because at that point, it's often too late. Hospitals should put in place policies and checklists to prevent bleeding in the third stage of labor. Other key changes are related to staff training and engagement, such as hemorrhage drills and conducting immediate debriefs after an adverse event occurs. Debriefs should also be happening on a systemic level through severe maternal morbidity reviews. Teams should be careful to make sure that cases are being chosen objectively for these reviews specifically. Finally, your facility should pay attention to women who come back after they've had a baby, because most of these women come in through the emergency department, so it's important to develop partnerships with the ED to help their team recognize when a postpartum hemorrhage may be occurring and act quickly. First, as with any improvement effort, you should start by identifying who's on your team, what is everyone's role, and how will they all work together to reduce hemorrhage-related morbidity and mortality. The other important way to get started is to review your facility-level data on obstetric hemorrhages. During this review, identify whether disparities or inequities exist. You will also want to review your facility's policies and procedures around readiness, recognition, response, and reporting of hemorrhages. Be sure you have a protocol for massive transfusions. Everyone on the labor floor and staff in other units such as the blood bank and emergency department should participate in obstetric hemorrhage drills so that they know what to do and they know how to work together if a hemorrhage occurs. Finally, look at the structures in place to support timely treatment of hemorrhage. Ensure that you have a hemorrhage card and that everyone on the floor knows what is included and how to use the materials, and that your blood bank has the appropriate capacity. Team debriefing after, at a minimum, all stage three hemorrhages is a great way to learn what went well and identify what could be improved in the future. All decisions depend on having a hemorrhage recognized in a timely manner. That is why quantification of blood loss, commonly referred to as QBL, is so important. Quantifying blood loss, rather than simply estimating, helps prevent denial and delays in women receiving life-saving treatments. The AIM Patient Safety Bundle on Obstetric Hemorrhage, along with the accompanying consensus paper, are helpful resources. CMQCC has an obstetric hemorrhage toolkit, which is also an excellent resource. A1's postpartum hemorrhage project and associated tools, including a debrief checklist and video on QBL, are all very helpful as well.